cafe anyway. Mm-hmm. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's episode 2624. 2624. Yes, I've done a lot of FFFF episodes of the show called Mike's Daily Podcast. At Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Pod Castro Valley. It's nice. There are people walking around the Pod Castro Valley. Not skating on ice because it's like June, but you know what? Soon it'll get really hot, probably. But we're really enjoying the mild temperatures. Mike's Daily Podcast. And you might be listening to this on the 16th of June. If that's the case, then it is Mike's Wear Blue Day. Daily you have to wear blue. Podcast. Unless you hate the Dodgers. Yeah. Then I guess you don't. But. At any rate, that's all the sports I can talk about. Oh, that and the A's are leaving. It's pretty much signed, and it's all set to go. And Las Vegas, in Nevada, they got all these taxes. You probably heard about that they're going to pay. The taxpayers are going to pay for the A's to be there. You know what I say? I say I'm done paying for the A's here (laughs) with the taxes here. (sighs) It was, oh, it was one, who was the guy? Someone from the baseball association, whatever, said, oh yeah, all those people doing the reverse boycott the other day, which a reverse boycott is, you don't do a boycott. Like everybody shows up. They said that this guy said, well, yeah, all those people showing up, it was still only an average attendance. And I guess that's uh, A's fans. But enough about that because I've gone to a game and I had fun with my lovely lady friend. I don't know if we'll post that as the podcast picture, which you can see at mikesdailypodcast.com. But we did go to a game. I've gone to, I think, a couple. And, well, it's just, it's just time. Something else has to happen with that stadium. Something new. A new bit of sports, perhaps. And here's today's podcast picture. Well, it'd have to be sports, wouldn't it? I guess the podcast picture is from the other day. I was walking around where there's all these horses and stuff. (laughs) And there's uh, this it's on top of Columbia. I was telling you about it last podcast. And there's a sign saying trail is closed because of the storms because of the rain. And basically it's a sign that somebody put there months ago. And it does not apply because everything is dried out. The trail is fine. The late great Basil the Boxer and I used to walk along on this trail. And have a good time with the horses there. Until one day the horse tried attacking him. And that was pretty scary. See a picture of that at mikesdellypodcast.com. Not Basil being attacked by the horse. We're not going to be gratuitous like that. So my lovely lady friend and I have been watching a couple different shows. We were watching a show on Acorn TV that's called Blood. Yes, that sounds pretty violent, doesn't it? Well, it's a story of a family in Ireland. And it's more about the blood that ties them together. The family blood. Blood is thicker than family, whatever that expression is. So it's actually quite sad it was interesting to watch. We watched the first season, then we find out, oh, there's two more. And, oh, everything gets dark and sad again, and it, wow. So we, we stopped watching it after the first season, and now we're watching a show on Netflix. And that was, by the way, that was an Acorn TV show, and it was all about Ireland. Everybody's got Irish accents. And you hear lingo used by the Irish so that was pretty good. Cool. Beautiful scenery. Now we're watching this particular Netflix show that it, it came out last year. And it's called The Watchman. Not The Watchmen with the superheroes and all that. Who's watching The Watchmen? No, this is The Watch, the Watchman. The Watcher. It's called The Watcher, I think. At any rate, whatever it's called. It's got the Jennifer Coolidge in it. And it's Jennifer doing her Jennifer thing. 
she pretty much does one thing, right? And that's Hollywood, right? Am I doing the millennial right now? Oh, I'm getting all millennialish, right? Uh, but yes, they. She does her particular thing that she's good at, which gets a little old, which gets a little me on a rant against Hollywood that Hollywood never tries anything new and Hollywood just hires the same actors that play the same parts over and over. Oh, he did. He played a German in that in that. Quentin Tarantino movie He can play a German In the James Bond movie He's got an accent So just put him in it Alright give him a lot of money He'll like it He'll like the money Mike won't like the fact That that nothing is new Or original In Hollywood Or show business In general But Interestingly Speaking of The baseball Which I was doing Just moments Before I Transitioned over to the world of Me hating Hollywood It is the one thing that I Remember most about going to baseball Games I went to a Giants game too Was how much it costs Once you're in the park to get Stuff Like a beer was much cheaper Maybe a couple dollars cheaper At the A's games versus the Giants games But apparently the Miami Marlins have the cheapest hot dog prices in the league. Only three bucks. Gosh, that's practically Costco hot dog prices. And the San Francisco Giants have the most expensive hot dogs at $7.75. Which may be why I don't go to any Giants games. But Google, of course, very big in the Bay Area. As are the Giants. You see shirts everywhere for the Giants. Not so much for Google. I do actually have a Google t-shirt. I have three Google t-shirts because my ex-wife had a friend who worked for Google and she got us t-shirts all the time. And whenever I wear them, people go, hey, do you work for Google? And I suddenly go, uh, uh, uh uh-oh. They see me and I'm a, they think I'm a complaint box. They're going to complain to the guy in the Google shirt. So I stopped wearing it in public. As we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Anyway. But Google might get rid of passwords. They are upping their sec- their security game by introducing pass keys. This will decrease the likelihood of getting hacked and won't require users to remember a password anymore. But then what if you you got to do a bunch of you got to really know your Google to, to get the... F- There's a guy... Did you know Google is a last name? There's a show I watch on YouTube, which is owned by Google. Tim and Tammy Time. And they're an older... Eh, older. They're probably my age. Oh, well. They're Southern people. I think they're from Georgia. They're Georgians. And they go to Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee... And they go to interesting old towns And explore And they're fun to listen to And they were doing a live chat And I got to ask them a question And they answered it It was awesome The Fascinating Material Project The FM Project I I have a feeling it had something to do with hot dogs We're Oh They were talking about cheesecake Ice cream Yeah That's that's YouTube for you. You get to talk to your favorite people when they do a live the chat. The panel will close automatically. Please remain seated. But what I enjoyed about uh, this whole channel that they have, and then walking around and checking stuff out, is they uh, were walking through this old town somewhere in Georgia. I think it was Oglethorpe, Georgia. And they passed by this doctor's office And they didn't even stop to talk about it But there was a guy It was like Dr. John C. Google Was his name And it looked like it was a name That had been there on this building For like Since before Google existed So Interesting Maybe that, that, that guy's son Started Google No it was that other guy Anyway, Biden wants airlines to pay you for travel headaches. That was the plan, anyway, that he said uh, last month, wasn't it? Last year, 2.7% of all U.S. flights were canceled. Yes, 2.7%. And that was the highest rate in a decade. 
This will be a first for U.S.-based airlines. Refunds for canceled flights are federally required, but no major carrier offers extra cash for the inconvenience. Only JetBlue and Alaska Airlines currently guarantee compensation of any kind beyond a refund. And it's in the form of frequent flyer miles or vouchers. So you got to use it with them. Air travel complaints have quadrupled in recent years, with most coming from travelers trying to get refunds. 80% of cancellations from the first half of 2022 were attributed to airline mismanagement, like crew shortages, craft maintenance, or late arriving planes. And by craft maintenance, I don't think we're talking about the delicious food that they're making, they're crafting in the kitchens now. It's the keeping the aircraft maintained. Airlines would also be required to cover meals, transportation, and hotels during flight disruptions. You will travel into the incredible universe. It was 2009. I went to visit my mom and we, I got into some bad weather and then it turned out the plane that was supposed to get me to Daytona Beach to see my mom, it got canceled, not because of the weather, but because of mechanical problems. And somebody said, oh, you got to go over to this window and talk to somebody. So I went over there after waiting in line for a little bit. And not only did I get a hotel stay, but they gave me a bunch of vouchers for food places in the airport. And one of them was a Chili's, I remember. And I had a big Chili's dinner. And then I went to the hotel and I had remembered that there was a DJ friend, somebody who worked for me when I was a program director at a radio station in Huntsville, Alabama called 93.3 The Wolf, or as everybody in Huntsville called it, The Woof. Tim was his name, and Tim was working as a nighttime DJ in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I think he has since moved on to Savannah, but he, uh, I, I texted him, say, I said, uh, I'm in Atlanta, and he said, hey, that's awesome. Let me show you around. I get off at 10 o'clock tonight. So I met up with him. We went to the Varsity in Atlanta, where when you first walk in the door, they, somebody says, what do you have? 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 What do you? And they say it so fast, you don't know what they're saying. They're saying, what will you have? And I think that's what they said. And that's going to be the name of the show is Think, because I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember. Maybe, maybe it'll be remembrance or remembering or, or recalling or recollection or something to that effect. But yes, they had burgers and I think onion rings they're known for. So after eating at Chili's at 10 o'clock at night, I'm eating at Varsity. And then Tim got me back to my hotel room and I had to be up by five the next morning to get on the shuttle to get over to the airport. And as I'm waiting... To go through security I'm wearing a t-shirt And I still have this t-shirt It's amazing how I don't really throw out (laughs) t-shirts Google t-shirts and all And this t-shirt had a picture of a cassette On the front of it It's just like a big cassette And I'm going through the line And the security guard guy At the TSA security Points at me and says Sir, is that cassette blank? And it freaked me out I didn't even think of the the stupidity of the question But He meant it as a joke I go I guess it is So Experts predict That this summer Could be even worse With the airlines But implementing The new rules Could take months Or even years But that was the plan Anyway By Biden And in One last bit Oh my gosh We're covering so much Sports on today's show I apologize But LeBron James, you probably heard, is officially a billionaire. This came to my attention via Rob Black. I produce his podcast called Rob Black and Your Money. And he mentioned here that basketball superstar LeBron James made history by becoming the first NBA player to join the billionaire club. Born to a 16-year-old single mother and raised by a patchwork of family members and friends, on the court, LeBron has earned $431 million dollars. In salary Wow 
from the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Miami Heat, and the current team, Los Angeles Lakers. James has also amassed an impressive, impressive $900 million off the court through endorsements and business ventures. So that's how he's doing it. He took equity in the Beats, in Beats by Dre, by Dr. Dre. It was that uh, special new sound system. I don't know if you're listening to me, you're probably not listening on a those Beats headphones or maybe you are and I sound super fantastic but he also became a spokesperson and part owner of Blaze Pizza whenever you see a Blaze Pizza that's LeBron James and they got 340 locations across the US his stake is now valued at 40 million dollars he is also part owner of Fenway Sports Group which owns the Boston Red Sox the Liverpool FC and other sports teams. Red Sox won the World Series in 2018. The Liverpool FC captured the Premier League title in 2020. And he is also the co founder of Spring Hill Entertainment. They have created hit shows like Survivor's Remorse and The Wall. I have not seen either of those. <laughs> but apparently he's created those. And he's also, of course, in Space Jam. And Space Jam, A New Legacy. He stars alongside uh, Bugs Bunny. And that offers supplements and other products to help people achieve... Oh, he, he offers supplements and other products to help people achieve their fitness goals. His real estate portfolio is worth over $100 million. Dang, so that's how he did it. He diversified. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley, look who's here. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Shelly Chew Hardship Chester Advisor. Who's LeBron James? He's this athlete. He's very rich. Oh, Mike Matthews, that's fantastic. I'm a gift shop supervisor, Mike Matthews. You want to buy a snow globe that's shaped like a basketball? Okay, sure. Why not? It's a snow globe basketball. That's the n- next new thing. Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer, Mike. That was all very fascinating what you covered today. Happy Wear Blue Day. I'm blue. Yes, I'm blue. I'm blue. That song got redone again. It's been redone like twice now with people never singing it the way the guy sang it with all the crazy, weird uh, auto-tuning run amok. I I, I full 45. Yes, I full 45. And I have that CD... Right over here, it's in the E section, and I don't see, I see Elton John, I say, I see Eve 6, because I would swallow the rinds, no, I would choke the rinds, have faith in nothing, come on, put my tender heart in a blender, watch it spin around to a precious oblivion, rendezvous then, and it's through with you, ah, uh, and who, there's erasure. <sighs> erasure. I try to discover a little something to make me sweeter. Oh, baby, refrain from breaking my heart. This podcast is over now. Also in the E section. How did I forget Enya? Enya's so cool. She's got that Orinoco flow. That would give, you know, 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 flow. And yes, our Orinoco flow. And then she also did that other song. Only time. Now that's legit. uh, To me. And that's the end of the show. Next show, it'll be the wonderful... Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, anything else you want to cover that we didn't cover or if you'd like to cover again in some other way, call me at 510-228-4640. And with more ways to reach me, it's A-Frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.